First things first, what the heck is cryptocurrency anyway? Well, in a nutshell, cryptocurrency is like regular money, but instead of being backed by governments or shiny rocks dug out of the ground, it's backed by math and computer science. Transactions are recorded on a big, fancy digital ledger called the blockchain, which is basically like a giant, unalterable Google spreadsheet in the sky. Think of it like sending secret messages, but instead of passing notes in class, mm -hmm. you're sending money across the internet. And the best part, no need to worry about your nosy neighbor or the government snooping on your transactions. With crypto, you can buy a new pair of socks for your pet parrot PD and complete privacy. But where did this crazy idea come from? Well, let's take a trip back to the groovy 70s where bell bottoms were king and computers were the size of refrigerators. A bunch of computer science nerds were playing around with something called public key cryptography. Sound familiar? Which is basically like having a super secret decoder ring that everyone can see, but only you can use. This was a big deal because it meant that you could send secret messages without having to meet up in a shady back alley to exchange keys. We all know the only thing nerds love more than solving complex math problems is avoiding social interaction. Then, on a spooky Halloween night on October 31st, 2008, a mysterious figure named Satoshi Nakamoto, who may or may not be a time-traveling alien, developed a white paper outlining the concept of Bitcoin. The idea was to create a decentralized digital currency that didn't need banks or governments to function. Instead, it would rely on a public ledger called the blockchain to keep track of every transaction. And boy, did it catch on. At first, Bitcoin was mostly just used by tech geeks and libertarians who wanted to stick it to the man. But as more and more people started using it, the price began to skyrocket. In 2010, a guy even bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin, which would be worth over $300 million today. Ouch. At the time, Bitcoin was trading at just just a third of a penny. And then a few years later, this dude posted a video on YouTube in 2013. I suggest you take one dollar, one freaking dollar and buy some Bitcoins. Well, at this point, Bitcoin had already jumped to around hundred dollars per coin. As Bitcoin's popularity grew, so did the number of other cryptocurrencies popping up. They started building out the infrastructure to make cryptocurrencies more accessible. ICOs or initial coin offerings became the hot new thing with startups raising millions of dollars in mere minutes by selling their own custom cryptocurrencies. It was like Kickstarter on steroids, except instead of getting a t-shirt or a fancy new gadget, you got a digital token with a funny name. In 2011, Litecoin was created and designed to be faster and more scalable than Bitcoin. In 2012, Ripple was launched and aimed to revolutionize cross-border payments. And then there was Ethereum, created in 2015, which introduced the concept of smart contracts and decentralized applications. It seemed like every day there was a new coin promising to be faster, cheaper, and more secure than the last. Of course, not all of these projects were legit. Some were outright scams, while others were just poorly thought out. But when the price of everything went up, nobody really cared. People were getting filthy rich doing it, and it didn't matter how they made their money. It was like a casino, and everyone was doubling down when ever they won, watching their chips stack higher and higher. Exchanges started popping up to let you buy and sell crypto with the click of a button. One of the earliest and most popular exchanges was Mt. Gox, which at its peak in 2013 was handling over 70% of all Bitcoin transactions worldwide. Yeah. Bitcoin had shot up to around $1,000 by this point. Wallets were created to help you store your coins. And of course, there were plenty of online forums and social media groups where crypto enthusiasts could gather to swap tips, rumors, and the occasional conspiracy theory. As more people started using Bitcoin, the price started to go up and up and then way up. Suddenly, all those basement tech nerds who had been mining Bitcoin since the early days became millionaires overnight. They started buying Lamborghinis and private islands while the rest of the world just scratched their heads and wondered what the what is going on. Of course, with all this money thrown around, regulators started to take notice. Countries like China cracked down hard on crypto, banning ICOs and shutting down exchanges. But others like Japan and Switzerland took a more welcoming approach, like recognizing crypto currencies as legal tender and creating frameworks for their use. But with great value comes great volatility. Pretty sure Uncle Ben said something like that. The price of Bitcoin started whipping up and down like it was on a roller coaster. Bitcoin would go up by 20% in one day and then down by 50% the next. Its price action looked like a penny stock and most people were afraid of it. One day you're a millionaire and the next day you're crying into your ramen noodles. It 
wasn't all sunshine and rainbows though. High profile scams and hacks started to plague the industry. In 2014, Mt. Gox suddenly shut down after losing 850,000 Bitcoins worth around $450 million at the time. Like misplacing your car keys, except of a Toyota Camry, it's half a billion dollars worth of digital money. Oops. It was a devastating blow to the community and sent the price of Bitcoin tumbling from around $800 to under 400. The Dow, a decentralized venture fund built on Ethereum got hacked in 2016 and drained a $50 million worth of Ether, causing the price of Ethereum to crash from around $20 to under 10. Governments and regulators also started to take a closer look at cryptocurrencies, with some embracing them and others cracking down hard. China, which had once been a hub of crypto activity, banned ICOs and crypto exchanges in 2017. Other countries like Japan and South Korea took a more friendly approach, recognizing cryptocurrencies as legal tender and creating frameworks for their use. In the US, the response was more mixed. While some lawmakers saw the potential in blockchain technology and advocated for a light touch approach to regulation, others viewed cryptocurrencies with suspicion and called for tighter controls. The SEC, or the Securities and Exchange Commission, started to take a harder line on ICOs, while the IRS, you know what that is, began to crack down on crypto tax evaders. And speaking of the SEC, they've been making like difficult for some of the biggest players in the crypto game. Take Ripple, for example. The company behind the XRP token has been locked in a legal battle with the SEC since 2020, with regulators claiming that XRP is an unregistered security. The case has been a roller coaster ride, with both sides claiming victory at various points. But the outcome could have huge implications for the entire crypto industry. If the SEC wins, it could open up the floodgates for similar lawsuits against other projects. If Ripple wins, it could set a precedent for how cryptocurrencies are regulated in the United States. Meanwhile, in the background, something interesting was happening. Developers began to realize that blockchain tech could be used for more than just digital money. Enter the world of decentralized finance or DeFi. Suddenly, you could take out a loan, trade derivatives, or earn interest on your crypto, all without the need for a bank or financial institution. It was like discovering a glitch in the matrix of traditional finance, and crypto natives were all too happy to exploit it. But DeFi was just the tip of the iceberg. And then, there were NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which is just a fancy way of saying expensive JPEGs that you can buy with fake internet money. Suddenly, everyone and their dog, literally, there were NFTs of dogs, was selling digital art for millions of dollars. The Bored Apes Yacht Club, a collection of 10,000 unique digital apes, became the hottest ticket in town, with some individual apes selling for millions of dollars at the height of the craze. $69 million for a digital collage? 170k for a virtual plot of land? In the world of NFTs, it seemed like anything was possible as long as you had enough Ethereum to cover the gas fees. But like all things in the crypto world, the NFT craze was not without its controversies. Many critics accused the market of being a bubble fueled by speculation and hype rather than real value. And when the market eventually cooled off in 2022, many investors were left holding expensive JPEGs with little resale value. Board apes that once sold for over a million dollars we're now struggling to fetch even 100K. But despite the wild ups and downs, cryptocurrencies just kept chugging along. More and more people started to realize the potential in this technology beyond just magic internet money. As cryptocurrencies started to gain mainstream attention, things got a little weird. You had rappers like Soulja Boy and Ghostface Killa shilling their own coins. Even Steven Seagal got in on the action with his Bitcoin project. And yes, that's really how it's spelled. One of the most fascinating developments in recent years has been the rise of meme coins, cryptocurrencies that started as jokes but ended up amassing huge followings and market caps. Jokes on you, apparently. The most famous of these is Dogecoin, which was created in 2013 as a parody of Bitcoin. Dogecoin is considered the grandfather of meme coins, created as a joke to represent the outrageous nature of how high cryptos can go based on a meme. For years, it was little more than an internet curiosity with a small but devoted community of fans. But the king of memes, the one who could move markets with a single tweet was none other than Elon Musk. The billionaire CEO of Tesla and SpaceX took a particular liking to Dogecoin, a joke cryptocurrency featuring a cute Shiba Inu dog. Musk's tweet sent the price of Dogecoin soaring from around half a cent at the start of the year to an all-time high of 17 cents 
<laughs> now, both SpaceX and Tesla already support Dogecoin payments. The meme-inspired crypto is now the world's eighth most valuable cryptocurrency. Other meme coins like Shiba Inu and SafeMoon also saw huge price spikes fueled by social media hype and FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. But the meme coin craze also raised serious questions about market manipulation and the power of influencers like Musk. The SEC even launched an investigation into whether Musk's tweets constituted securities fraud. Many naive investors learned the hard way that just because some guy on Reddit said a coin was going to the moon, didn't actually mean it would. And then there were the hacks, scams, and exit schemes that left many in the crypto community jaded and wary. In 2022, the crypto world was rocked by a catastrophe of epic proportions, the collapse of the Luna Crypto Network. It was like watching a slow motion train wreck, except instead of watching trains, it was people's hopes, dreams, and life savings. Luna and its sister token, Terra USD or UST, were supposed to be the dynamic duo of the crypto world. UST was an algorithmic stable coin, which is basically just a fancy way of saying magic internet money that's totally stable, we swear. The idea was that UST would always be worth $1, thanks to some smart coding and a pinky promise from the crypto gods. But then in May 2022, the unthinkable happened. UST lost its peg to the dollar and Luna crashed. In just a few days, $60 billion worth of digital currency was wiped out, leaving investors devastated and the crypto community weeping. The fallout was brutal. People who had poured their life savings into Luna saw their fortunes evaporate overnight. And at the center of it all was Do Kwan, the charismatic founder of Terraform Labs, the company behind Luna and UST. Kwan was like the Elon Musk of the crypto world, a brash, outspoken leader with a cult-like following. He was known for his cocky tweets and his unwavering belief in his own genius. But as Luna and UST started to unravel, Kwan's crypto empire came tumbling down. It was revealed that he had been pulling the strings behind the scenes, manipulating the market to prop up the price of Luna and UST. And when the whole thing collapsed, it was nowhere to be found. Quan went from crypto king to the world's most wanted man overnight. He was slapped with lawsuits, investigations, and even an Interpol red notice. And now he's facing a civil fraud trial. The contagion spread quickly with other stable coins and cryptocurrencies also taking a hit. It was a stark reminder of the risks involved in this largely unregulated market and many investors were left holding the bag. But the hits kept coming. In November, 2022, the popular cryptocurrency currency exchange FTX, funded by Wonder Kid Sam Bankman Freed, imploded spectacularly spectacularly. It was revealed that the exchange had been using customer funds to prop up a failing hedge fund, leaving customers unable to withdraw their money. The fallout was swift and severe. Bankman Freed, once hailed as the savior of the crypto industry, was arrested and charged with fraud. The price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies plummeted, with Bitcoin dropping from around $20,000 to under 16 k in a matter of days. Many investors lost their life savings. But something funny happened on the way to the moon. Wall Street started to take notice. Maybe it was the fact that Bitcoin was outperforming every other asset class, or maybe it was the realization that you can't put the crypto genie back in the bottle. But suddenly, the suits wanted in. In January 2024, the SEC finally approved the first Bitcoin spot ETF, the financial instruments that would allow investors to buy into Bitcoin without having to actually buy and hold the cryptocurrency itself. It was a watershed moment for the industry. Giants like BlackRock, Fidelity, and even your grandma's pension fund could now safely invest in Bitcoin without having to worry about all that pesky, not your keys, not your coin stuff. And invest they did to the tune of billions of dollars. This influx of institutional money helped push the price of Bitcoin to new all-time highs and made a few basement-dwelling early adopters into overnight millionaires. But more importantly, it signaled that crypto was here to stay. No longer the purview of tech geeks and libertarian idealists, cryptocurrency had officially entered the mainstream, and with mainstream acceptance came mainstream scrutiny. But the world of crypto is always evolving, and the next big thing is always just around the corner. Take AI, for example. Companies like NVIDIA are already developing specialized chips for mining and other crypto-related tasks. And some projects 
They're even using AI to create entire virtual worlds, complete with their own economies and currencies. Imagine a future where AI and crypto work together to create a more efficient, transparent, and accessible financial system, where smart contracts and decentralized apps can automatically execute complex financial transactions without the need for intermediaries, where machine learning algorithms can help us make better investment decisions and predict market trends with uncanny accuracy. It might sound like science fiction, but the truth is we're already seeing glimpses of this future today. And as AI technology continues to evolve, the possibilities are endless. But for all the uncertainty, there's also a sense of excitement and possibility. Cryptocurrencies have opened up a whole new world of financial innovation and disruption, and there's no telling where it might lead. Some see them as the future of money, while others view them as a dangerous bubble waiting to burst. But one thing is clear, the genie is out of the bottle and there's no putting it back. Looking ahead, it's impossible to say exactly where the crypto market will go from here. It's been a wild ride since Satoshi first unleashed Bitcoin into the world and things show no signs of slowing down. Cryptocurrencies have gone from obscure internet magic money to a multi-trillion dollar asset class. Institutions that once scoffed at the idea are now tripping over themselves to get a piece of the action. But the story is far from over. With mainstream adoption on the rise, institutional money pouring in and a new generation of builders and believers pushing the boundaries of what's possible, it's hard to imagine a world without cryptocurrency. Sure, there will be bumps in the road, more hacks, more scams, more boneheaded tweets from Elon Musk. So dear viewer, the question is this, do you want to be a spectator or do you want to be a part of history? Because make no mistake, that's what this is, a revolution in the making, a once in a lifetime opportunity to be at the forefront of a technological and financial paradigm shift. Of course, I'm not saying you should go out and bet the farm on Dogecoin though. If you do, please send me a postcard from your new private island. As with any investment, it's important to do your own research, understand the risks and never invest more than you can afford to lose. But if you're ready to take the plunge to learn the ins and outs of how to invest in crypto, click the link in the top right corner. Think of it as your own personal Morpheus guiding you down the rabbit hole and showing you just how deep it goes. Because in the end, cryptocurrency isn't about getting rich quick, though that's a really nice side effect. It's about taking control of your financial future, about being a part of something bigger than yourself. It's about looking at the world as if it's saying, you know what, I think we can do better. And with the right knowledge, the right tools and the right mindset, there's no telling how far you can go.